Hi guys, welcome back to Exam Debug. Uh, Chris McKenna here, and we're continuing on our Python 3 tutorial. And today we're going to be looking at lists. So lists are sort of like the variables we've done before. So let's say we had um, item. So this is going to be items that we get for when we go shopping. We're going to make a shopping list. List. Um, I'm going to say item equals, let's have some fruit on here, try and be healthy, I'm going to diet. Let's say item equals apple. And then at the end we want to print our shopping list. So one, two, three, four, five. That's a normal variable, this isn't a list yet. So it's going to print this. Now if we wanted to add more items to the list, uh, to the, the shopping list, we could say item 2 equals, item 3 equals mango, item 4 equals soap, and then we could have item plus item plus item. The problem is that would mean we would have to create a new variable for every item. And I don't know about you, but when I go shopping, sometimes I have one item, sometimes I have more than one item. <laughs> um, depending on uh, how rich I'm feeling on that particular day, or perhaps how hungry. So what we can do is we can make something called a list instead. So I'm going to call it item, what we'll call it, yeah, item list, or shop list, let's call it shop list. So just shop list, there we go. So we've got shop list equals apple. So that's still a variable, and list is, this isn't doing anything this, here it's just we shouldn't use spaces in the name, so it's nicer to use an underscore rather than um, rather than running running them together makes it easier to read. Um, so we're going to say shop list equals apple. So it's still a variable at that point. So what we want to do is we want to make a list, and to make a list we need to put it inside square brackets like this. And what we can then do is we can say I want to buy apples, and I want to buy, what did I say, soap, and I want to buy, I don't know, what else do I want? Uh, I want to buy a newspaper. Um, okay, so three items is enough for my shop today. And then what I can do is I can print out my shop list, shop underscore list. Three, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, and then it prints out all the items that are on our list. So it's okay so far. Um, now what we can do is that's okay, but we're not really adding anything. We're not really removing anything. So let's do what we did in the last class and bring in a while loop. So I'm going to say I'm going to make a, new, a little variable called. Uh, and this one's just going to be a blank keyboard. It's going to be a blank text. And I'm going to say while item is not equal to end. Now there are nicer ways to do this. I know you can tell people in the comments, but um, there's a reason why we're doing it like this. Okay, so we'll come back to to the the why. So while the item is not equal to end, I'm going to get the item is going to equal uh, input uh, what do you want to buy today? Okay, and then I can close that and close the thing. So while the item is not equal to end, it's going to ask the user to say, what do you want to buy today? And then after the user has typed in, it's going to print. Now, notice we're not doing anything with our list yet. Yeah, it's not, we're, we're just testing that this part of the program works. Um, one of the major mistakes I've seen students make is they type, they type, they type, they type, they type, and they don't test stuff as they go along. Um, and that makes it really hard later for debugging. It, if you can find the mistakes early on, if you can run the program regularly, you'll have more chance of seeing where the problem is than if you wait till the end 
and get just a random syntax error that doesn't really say much about what it is. Okay, so what do you want to buy today? I want to buy apples and pears. And I want to end. But nothing is added to the list. But we can see that the while loop works. So while it's not equal to end, it keeps asking for stuff. But what we want to do is we want to add items to our shopping list. And to do that, we use something called append. Now you're going to see these methods used, and a method is like a, a little program inside other programs. We'll talk about them in more detail later, but they have a full stop after it. Oh, I know. Giving me some advice here. <laughs> um, so, and how we want to use a pen. So these are the these are the list methods that we can use. So we're going to append to the list, and we're going to append, we're going to add the item. So to go through that again, it creates our list, it creates our variable, and it's going to keep on asking what item do you want to buy today until it says n. It's going to then repeat the list until we, uh, sorry, it's going to add the item to the shopping list and until it says n. And it's, we're going to end up with a weird thing here, you'll see why. Um, that it's going to add on end to our list as well, but we're going to fix that afterwards. Okay, so what do you want to buy today? I want to buy shoes, and I want to buy a pineapple. And since I'm in Indonesia, I want to buy some tempeh, because tempeh is awesome. If you've never tried eating tempeh, I highly recommend it. And we want to end. And then when we print our list, we get shoes, pineapple, tempeh, and end. So that's adding each item to the list. Now when we come out of the, the while loop, end, well, we really don't want end on our shopping list, do we? So what we can do is, outside of the while loop, we can say the opposite of append, shop list. We'll stop. I, mean, I just want to see how this thought. And you can see this list comes up if you wait. We want to remove. I thought I could click on it. Oh well. Uh, remove. And we want to remove. And then we'll print our shop list. So this will find what you put on here and it will remove it from the list. What do you want to buy today? I want to buy, okay, let's repeat. Shoes, oops, shoes, uh, tempe, and random fruit. And, and so we end up on our list with um, the, the items minus the end section. Okay, so append means add to the list. Remove means take away from the list. Now we're not really in a nice place yet um, because this, this doesn't look very decent, does it? So what we can do is we can choose individual items from our list. Uh, now we're going to come to for statements in the future and you'll see how they work better with this. For now I just want to show you the, the concept so we're just going to repeat it. So we're going to say, today you need to buy, uh, I do need to put quotation marks in, that was kind of stupid. There we go, today you need to buy, and I'm going to have another print, and I want to print the first item from my list. So to do that, I say shop list. I like before, after it, I put square brackets. Now, in here, I put the number of the item that I want from the list. So for example, I could print item number one. Save, and um, oh, let's say we'll print item number two as well, because I want you to see something that's a bit weird that happens in programming, especially with lists, and two. 
1,2,3,4,5, run. What do you want to buy today? Hats and gum. Uh, and, I don't know, geez. And, okay, today you need to buy gum and cheese. Huh? But hang on a minute, gum was the second item on my list. And cheese was the third item, so I asked for item one and two. So why is it doing this? And the reason is quite simple, simple-ish. It's because in computing, in computer science, what we are in programming, when we're using lists and other things, strangely enough, we don't start counting from one, we start counting from zero. And this, this makes sense once you, you can read into it, like the binary numbers, so zero is kind of counted as one of our numbers so that we're not wasting space and things. But for now, all you really need to know is that when you're counting things, generally speaking, in uh, programming, you want to start from zero rather than from one. Let's see how that works. What do you want to buy today? I want to buy. Oops. And pipe. I want to buy cheese, uh, apples, and bread. And with end. And I get cheese, apples, and bread. So zero is the first item, one is the second item, and two is the third item. So that can get a little bit confusing. Um, and you might be wondering why, what's going on here, why, why is this list not, why am I getting an error perhaps um, from my list, one, two, three, four, five, so if you did something like this, uh, bread, dogs, yeah, food, <laughs> and then you might get an error like this and you're saying, oh, why, why, what does it mean to index out of range? Well, that just means you're asking for something that isn't on the list. Okay, um, I think that's enough for today on lists. Um, I would say, obviously, this bit here is not good. Uh, you'd want to use some kind of repeat, and I'll show you more with for loops later. Um, but you could use a while loop to just get the number of items and things. There, there are ways around it. Um, today, it's just so you can see what's going on with uh, this number system here. So again, 0, 1, 2, rather than 1, 2, 3. Add to a list, append, and remove from a list, remove. So maybe you can try making your own list of something. So think about things that you like. Maybe have a similar program that's going to be asking the, the user to give you something. Add it to your list and then print out that list in whichever way you like. Again, just, just pick a concept you like. If you like uh, computer games, make a list of computer games or your own children or uh, whatever you want, your classmates. It could be absolutely anything. Um, and we'll do this bit in a bit more detail next time. Right. Okay, thanks very much. Please subscribe. Um, and if you've got any questions or problems, post in the comments. Uh, good luck with your exams and stuff.